Hey guys, welcome to another update. Uh, so we're just going to fix and uh, pretty much finish off the jumping in this episode, um, at least until we revisit uh, doing a bit of parkour. Um, so what we'll do first is I want to add a walking and jump animation. So we'll go ahead and get started on that first. All right, so what we'll do is we'll open up the animator. Um, we'll make sure we go back to base layer and then switch our actual layer to jumping layer. What I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate the jump. I'm just going to control C and control V. We're going to change it from jump to walking underscore jump. And I'm just going to create a transition from any state to walking jump. And then I'm going to mimic all the others and make a transition from walking jump to falling idle. Cool. Under parameters, let's add another trigger. We'll call this walking jump. And then we'll just use that trigger in this transition. So if we scroll down to conditions, add another condition, walking jump right there. Cool. Now I need to create this walking jump. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take our normal jump. So we have our jumping up here. I'm going to duplicate it. So hold control and hit D. And we are going to change this to walking jump. Okay. So inside our new walking jump, we're going to rename the animation to walking underscore jump. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change the length. So I'm just going to click and drag this trim um, up until so what we're going to do with the walking jump is we're just going to cut it quite a bit. So we're going to cut the whole initial start into jump. So once you're happy with the way the animation now, I'm just going to hit a, uh, apply to make sure it's all saved. Um, and there we go, we've got our walking jump. Okay, so just like the other jumps, I'm going to control D on the animation itself to pop it out into its own item. And then we're going to go over to walking jump in the animator and click and drag that in. Cool. So now we're going to go add our jumping force. So let's click on fill, click window and animation and animation. Okay. And then in the drop down, we go over to our walking jump. So I'm going to pop over back to the scene view. Um, and we're basically going to add our trigger. Um, okay. So let's have a look. So I'd say we'll add our force keyframe two. So I'm just going to click add event from the event, apply jump force. Cool. Save. So just like that, we've added another jumping type. Uh, now we just got to go into our player controller um, just to basically hit our new trigger. All right. So into our uh, script here, our player controller. Uh, we're going to open up jumping and we're actually also going to apply another little fix. So in the previous tutorials, we also added a function for is input moving. Uh, we're going to add that in the checks here. So we'll just say and is input moving. So it'll basically make sure that not only is our character physically moving, but we are actually telling the character to move. And so running jump is called when we are not walking and we are moving. Uh, so we basically want to do the same. So I'm just going to write else and paste. So we're basically uh, just adding another if. Um, and obviously, instead of not walking, we'll just put walking. And then from running jump, we'll just put walking jump. Cool. So that's going to hit our new trigger, our walking jump trigger. So let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. Uh, just make sure it's working for now. So we'll make sure we're in walking mode. And while I'm walking, I hit space. There you go. See, so you jump straight away. And if I'm not moving, he does the whole preparing to jump. Cool. All right. So this leads me on to the next bug. So we take a look down under movement. So where we have our if statement, if we are moving, uh, we set the value for player movement. So when we're not moving, the value for player movement just stays static. So if that's not zero, um, it'll basically... Um, it, it won't reset to zero. So while we're moving, it's setting the value. I let go of the inputs, it stops setting the value, but that value is still holding a value greater than zero. So if I hit space, you see we actually move forward a little bit, which obviously we don't want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an else to the bottom of this. 
and uh, we'll set player movement equals vector three dot zero. So basically, if we're not pushing any movement, um, it always does this for me. And I never tell it to import it, so I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, um, so yeah, we're setting player movement to vector 3.0, so we're basically zeroing it out if we're not moving, which is pretty much what we want. Um, so if we take a look now, that's that bug fixed. So we can move forward, let go of the input, and if I press space now, she just jump on the spot, which she does. Perfect. Uh, so the other thing now is putting a cap on the maximum uh, velocity speed so that we can't just keep going forward and forward uh, into an unrealistic speed. So best way to do this is firstly we will create our variable at the top. So we'll just create a public float. Um, help if I can spell public. Public float and we'll just call this max falling movement speed. That's a mouthful. Okay. So we're going to use that variable to basically set as our cap. So I guess by default, let's just give it a value of five. Um, and now what we're basically going to read is our speed going forward. Um, so if we have a look in the movement, um, so you see here is jumping triggered here where we add the force. We're basically going to check our current speed um, in the player movement direction. And uh, if it's greater than that maximum speed variable we just created, we are not going to add force. So basically, what we're going to do is we'll create an if statement. And what we'll say is uh, vector three dot dot. So we're going to work out the, uh, the magnitude relative uh, to the player movement. So where we want to get the magnitude from is a rigid a character rigid body dot velocity and the direction we want to get it in is just player movement. Okay, so we're checking if that is less than max falling movement speed, then we can add our force. Just like so. All right, so we're going to play a little bit with the gravity now, just so we can see this working. So I'm going to go into player controller. Um, I'm actually going to set the jumping height as well. Uh, so I'm just going to open up settings. So we have our jumping force of 500. Let's just change that to 650 for now. Um, and temporarily, let's set gravity to 1. So I'm going to hit play. And firstly, you'll notice we go shooting up in the sky because gravity is on 1. But while we're up here, we can test our maximum speed. So if I hold right, we just make sure that it bottles out. So you can see it's not constantly adding the speed, which is great. So we're not going like supersonic. But we can still move a little, which is just what we wanted. Let's see, we're able to move up here. Eventually fall down. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. Cool. All right, so that's pretty much what we wanted with the jumping. Um, so we can still move. Um, I need to change that <laughs> gravity. Okay, let's change the gravity back to 10 um, and just make sure it still works as expected. All right, so we can jump. Let's see, you can still move a little. Um, I'm actually going to change the max falling movement speed to 10. So I'm just going to double it because I don't feel like uh, we're moving enough. So if I jump, that's a bit better. Yeah, okay, that's better. So yeah, so that'll be it for the jumping fix. Um, I'm getting really excited for the next tutorials because we're actually going to start working on combat. 
Um, and the way I've got it planned out is uh, really cool. So can't wait to get started on those. I think this will um, this will be the last tutorial on the jumping for now. Uh, like I did say, I'm planning on doing some climbing so you can climb boxes and fences and stuff like that. Just basic, um, basic parkour. Uh, nothing too fancy, but jumping and catching a ledge and pulling yourself up, stuff like that, um, I will look into. Um, but I kind of want to get some of the combat basics down. And then I also want to do crouching and proning because I want to start working on a stealth system as well. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot planned. Um, I'm very happy with how the controller has turned out so far. Um, I think even, <clears throat> even the target mode is looking great. Oh, don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorials.